So Rosie, I tend to hibernate throughout January. I mean, I really I hibernate all year round. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly in London now, I just like to I hibernate. Know. But you're going out tonight. This evening I'm going out. It's a girlfriend's amazing. birthday party that I promised I would be at. I yes. myself for a little bit under the weather. I will say. January is always like so sluggish and yeah. kind of uninspiring and month. Post but kind of holiday. Post holiday, then there's all these New Year's resolutions, get back in shape and everything. So, um, but I am feeling a bit run down. So I text you this morning. Tonight. You do my makeup, yeah. make me feel like a new woman. Um, so I am leaving my look up to you. But okay. I'm wearing probably just some leather pants or black jeans, um, some uh, over the knee boots, maybe a little silk uh, camisole, like I was thinking maybe a silvery colour, I've got this really beautiful Sounds vintage nice. silver camisole. Okay. Kind of glamorous rock and roll. Very okay, but easy and, yes. 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 Okay, so why don't we in that case do maybe more of a lip stain, so something like a kind of berry stain. Okay. Some colour in the cheeks and a yes, little bit of contour please, so that yeah. everything is nice and sort of bright and particularly this time of yes. year. And then on the eyes, a little bit of sparkle, maybe some silver, oh, I love that. taupey grey, sort of that kind of sparkly thing. So your eyes very wide open, it's yes. not light, it's light and kind of love that. airy. I love that, that's kind way. of following that rule of doing something a little cleaner on the eye and doing yeah. a stronger lip, love that. Yeah, so it just looks effortless and easy. Okay. And George is going to do your hair. George is here. You are going to fit a million hair. dollars, let's like get started. Woman. So to save time, we've done your base and your concealer, yes. um, because we did that in the last video. So yes. if you haven't seen that, please watch it. And um, I've used a foundation with no SPF because I know you're going to be photographed a lot tonight and I didn't, we didn't want any dreaded flashback. I'm going to use this blush because we spoke about berry tones and this is a nice creamy blush by Stila and it goes on quite strong and then you kind of buff it away. You can use fingers or you can use a brush. I'm going to use actually the brush that I put your foundation on with and just start really nicely buffing in those edges because what you want with cream powders and sorry cream blushes is to have it really in synergy with the skin so if I turn you that way you can see how really buffing those edges and starting to blend it in with the foundation and this way also you're able to build up slowly so you can keep kind of stepping back and I love cream blush I love cream brush too. I think it's just the ultimate natural look. Yes, fresh, isn't mm -hmm. it? And I love, that, like you said, you can build it, make it as strong as you like. So I always put a little bit on my brow bone. Yeah, that's looks Whatever really nice. blush colour I use on my apples and my cheek, I always put a little Brings bit on, it all on together. the brow bone. Let's yeah. do that then. And it, if you've got blue eyes, I always think it kind of pops them a little bit as yeah. well. So it's, that's a good trick that I've picked pink. up. So now I'm just going to use some powder, loose powder, to set the concealer and just use a little bit down the centre of the face, so just on the T-zone and also to set concealer under the eyes. So for eyes, Rosie, I'm thinking of this palette by Bourjois because it's got the kind of glittery silver but it's also got these really nice cool tones, almost like lavendery kind of browns. I think they'll be quite nice with... I love taupe colours on the eye. With kind of your uh, Contouring outfit. and... Yeah, we'll just do a contoured mm -hmm. eye. We won't do anything too heavy. Beautiful. So I'm going to start with this shade, which is the kind of um, taupey lavender colour there. I'll use a tissue because we have done our base, although we're going to go light. And then I'm just going to go with this colour all over the lid because it's quite light. And then we'll work the darker shade just into the contour a bit. And just all across the lid, just above the socket line. And then I'm going to start using, I'm just going to use a smaller brush, which I should have done, this kind of cool toned brown shade, to start buffing into the socket line. How many colours do you usually use on that eyelid for, for an eyeshadow look? Is there sort of a maximum or minimum amount that you like for the definition? I mean, Three is great because you mm -hmm. can do sort of light, medium and dark. Mm -hmm. But I think two is fine, to mm -hmm. be honest. I mean, people get so carried away with mm -hmm. loads of colours. But I think, you know, two good eye colours and a, a highlighter of some description yeah. is enough. Otherwise, it kind of gets really complicated. Um, unless that's the kind of look you're going for. You yeah. know, you want to make a real statement with loads of colour. And then just really buffing. So we know you like that winged out look, even if you're not having a wingy liner, we're still going to go for that shape. Mm -hmm. So 
So just open your eyes for me. So you can see we're just kind of shading here at this outer corner. I'm going to use a similar shade. So that kind of cool taupey lavender underneath. Look up for me, darling. And then just at the outer edge here, actually, just going to do a really soft little bit of definition there. And just blend up. And there. And then I'm going to use this very shimmery colour, well, kind of glittery silver, just at the centre. So whilst you're doing um, the glitter, mm -hmm. sparkle, can I ask you a question that's coming from one of my followers? Yes, definitely. So I am Charlie, or I'm Charlie Perry, says, Hi Rosie, can you ask Lisa how she gets your skin so naturally glowy looking? Well, you've already got very naturally glowing <laughs> okay. skin anyway. Um, just... I've just used a light layer of foundation, haven't gone too heavy because it can get cakey and you don't need it and most people kind of don't. And then just using the concealer where it's needed. So, you know, really focusing on those shadowy areas or any blemishes, but keeping the overall kind of dewiness there and the glow. So I've just applied mascara to lower lashes only because you've got your extensions I do. on the top and they look so lovely. Thank you, they're my sort of favorite pick me up. Obviously, it's January and I've, um, I've been feeling a little under the weather. And so the other day I had um, a set of extensions put on by my girl, Catherine, at Flutter Eyes. She works in London and it's her own company. And I, look really I have to say, good. they really do make a big difference. Um, sometimes I let them get, like to get them for special occasions or big, important shoots or something. But this time I just felt like get I needed a little you. spruce, <laughs> a January spruce. So we look yes. really good. Thank you. So I'm just going to do a little bit of contour now. I'm actually going to use a powder contour just from the top of your ear. I have a good question that's come in from Happy Sunshine Barbie, and she says, oh, "Hi, name. Rosie. <laughs> My question is how I can achieve how can I achieve a natural but still defined contour?" Oh, I think it's all about getting the right colour because sometimes you use a bronzer which can be very orangey or a little bit too red. So when you're talking about contour, you're talking about shadow. You can always add warmth later with bronzers and, and um, blusher, but it's getting that good color. Like for example, I'm using this one, which is almost looks quite grayish. I don't know if you can see that one's by Kevin O'Quan. And um, it just will mimic that natural shadow. So when your skin's in shade, and then you can go over the top and warm it up, but it's just really good. For me, it's about having a bit of patience as well and really kind of making yeah. sure it's Building blended. Building up slowly, you know? It's, yeah. It's the blending. Take off the edges. If you can see the edges, if you can see the kind of stripe, then it's it's not good. Particularly, you know, if you're going to be wearing it in daylight, and I think mm -hmm. lots of people forget that contour in daylight looks very different from how it looks, um, you know, in photographs or... I do always think it's worth checking your makeup in a mirror in daylight or close to a window just to just to check that everything's blended and definitely doesn't look cakey or anything i always yeah. try and make sure i do that if i'm wearing a bit of makeup in the daytime so i'm just looking through some colors mm -hmm. we're going to go quite berryish um now you and i both put some questions on to our snapchat and we asked everyone if they had anything advice they wanted about beauty or makeup and not surprisingly the majority of people wanted to know how to get fuller lips because it is your trademark <laughs> and you are genetically blessed in that department, <laughs> unlike myself. It, it's funny because I was teased at school so much about it. and Isn't uh, that funny? So it's kind of full circle now that it's become my trademark throughout my, throughout my career. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, a really good question because I, I actually have, have an affinity and a real love for lip liner and I wear it nearly every day, even without lipstick. So one of my tricks is to always have really hydrated lips. I love to wear a lot of lip balm. Some lip balm up. Um, so I'm going to use this one here, and I just like to rub it into my lips and have them nice and hydrated without having too much. So it's yeah. slippy. It's yeah. getting that good kind of. And I'm I'm, I have quite a sort of red tint to my lips mm. already. Yeah, they're naturally such a nice colour. Um, so we're going to go berry, so, so what, what do you think? Yeah, I so think I'm going to use this lip liner here now, but one of the things that I actually like to do just on a day-to-day -day is to use a lip liner that's really close to my natural lips 
anywhere. That's right. We did that in the last yeah. video, which looked really yeah. kind of your everyday look. So it looks re then it looks really naturally defined. Yes. So I start with this um, lip liner here, which is kind of going to be a good match for our lipstick that we're going to put on later. Mm -hmm. And I just really uh, follow the line of my natural lips. And the nice thing about lip balm is that it kind of makes it really easy to run along your li your natural lip line. Mm, and you're not getting that harsh. You're not getting too much of a harsh line and it's really blendable. And so just kind of, it's hard to do talking at the same time. <laughs> and then you buff it slightly. I mean, I've got much thinner lips and I, I swear by lip liner, particularly if I'm using a dark color like we're gonna use on you today, a berry color or a red. So I will always over. I have to overdraw my bottom lip, particularly. Um, so but I for think me, I so I don't do a lot on my bottom lip because then I look top lip. It looks too bottom heavy. So I go with the top lip, and really focusing on the cupid's bow in here, and then you know, like I said, just following your natural, just defining that natural lip line anyway. Beautiful. Yeah. So it is about really what you've got and working with what you've got naturally. Yeah, but just defining yeah, it. Yeah, defining, absolutely. Um, and then if you need to just blend it in, I just do that with my finger, so yeah, that's how I end up. Very nice, so let's use the berry colour. Right, before we carry on, I've had a message from Patricia and she mm. wants to ask you, Rosie, what's the one beauty ritual that you stick by? Mm. Absolutely stick by. That's a really good question, Patricia. I would say the one beauty ritual that I really, really stick by is the importance of looking after your skin and your skincare and um, really investing in the best skincare that you can afford. Um, I really believe in regular facials. I believe in drinking a lot of water. I believe in having a good diet. Um, but I think uh, skincare and products are really important. And I also really believe in wearing SPF and sun cream every day and certainly in the sun keeping your skin yeah. out of the sun. I mean, I know it can be a bit boring. Yeah. I especially I love like to be a bit tanned. I always let my legs get brown on but, holiday. That's my concession. Yeah, like, if you can fake the tan yes. or bronze up yeah. your skin, I always think in the, in the end, in the long run, you're going to be happier be with the condition yourself. of your skin. I agree. I think your skin is like the canvas to everything. We spoke about that yeah, last time in did. our tutorial. It really is the canvas. And then, you know, if you've got great skin, everything kind of like sits yeah. on it perfectly and much, much better. So that's that I would be my agree. one beauty ritual. What's yours? I think mine would definitely be um, cleansing, actually. So kind of, it, yeah, it kind of reinforces what you're saying here. But, you know, getting home at the end of the day when you've got makeup on yeah. and really getting that makeup off. I like to do a really good massage while I'm mm -hmm. taking the makeup off. I agree with you on the SPF. Um, and there is only so much you can do with makeup if your skin is dry and needs a little bit of exfoliation or if it's you know really dehydrated then makeup just won't sit properly so it is about kind of really cleaning the skin and using good products I think we're both saying the same thing I'm just using this lip color but I'm kind of patting it on because I'm going to create this stain so I'm going to sort of get you to blot in a second and this is a really good way to create a stain just follow the natural shape or the shape that we've created with the pencil and then just really be kind of using a brush or you can use fingers obviously just a pat kind of getting it into the lips really at that base level I always like the stainy kind of effect yeah, it's, it's less really maintenance on a night out. I yeah, have to I've smudge just got it. <laughs> <laughs> if you smudge it, if you're talking too much, <laughs> definitely take a Q-tip and just. How many times does that happen when we're doing people's makeup or doing your makeup, whatever? Just chatting because I'm always talking, gossiping about the night before, the <laughs> night, and then next thing, whoa! But that is so easy just to correct. And as you've got less and less on the brush, it's nice because you can go around those edges and you haven't got tons and tons left on the brush. Just pop them slightly open your mouth. Um, don't forget to get into those corners as well. All right, can I just ask you to blot for me, please? A nice gentle blot. <laughs> it's a good look right now. It is a good look. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to go back in with the lip colour. This time I'm just going to put a little bit on my finger, my ring finger, don't worry. Super clean hands. 
In fact, I've used a really nice sanitizer on my hands. Can you smell it? It's mm. lavender. It's my favourite one. I love one. that one. So just increasing that stain, but without having it look like we've put on loads more lipstick. Just giving us that density again. And what's nice is you can still go back in with your lip pencil. So if you kind of step back and think, oh, actually, I want to make my top lip fuller or I just want to slightly change the shape, then you can use your pencil and go back in and just correct anything. And also it gives a nice finish. So I love this colour on you. What do you think, Thank Rosie? Thank you. I love it. It's perfect for January. It kind of feels like pick me up and it's going to look great with what I'm wearing this evening. Yeah. And, uh, it's got I'm, I feel very confident. Thank you. Good, good. That's what we want. I'm going to finish off with a touch of um, highlighting blush. So just going to Obviously your cheekbones are already to die for, but we can enhance that even further. That's why we love makeup. So I'm just gonna go on top of the blush we did earlier. We used a really nice cream blush, which is now pretty much in synergy with the skin. So I'm able to go over with a touch of highlighter. That's really beautiful. And that's nice because it will photograph really nicely. Right, before I do the final touch-ups, obviously we need to get your hair done, so should we go and wake up George? Let's go wake up George. Okay, so Rosie, any <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> hey Rosie, so what are we thinking hair-wise for tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll stop. Cool. Let me start. <laughs> so, George, I was thinking for this evening because you cut my hair yesterday, and I'm kind of really loving what you did. This sort of layered, kind of grown out fringe vibe. I thought mm -hmm. we could kind of go with that a little bit for for tonight. And I was sort sure. of thinking maybe we could do a little kind of half up, mm -hmm. kind of a bit back home, yep. bit of a you know sexy bardoey feel. I'm kind of getting inspired by this image over here, yeah, over yeah. here, and then kind of just having this kind of long grown out fringe feel and then a bit more tonged. Sure. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay, great. So firstly, we'll just, we'll tongue a few random bits, get a really nice wave through it. As you say, back home the top and then pull this back and tie it up. Look great. Cool. Kind of undone, sexy. Undone. Sexy, that's what we Troused. like. Troused. Yeah. Sexy. Exactly, okay. So whilst you're doing that, I thought I would ask a few questions. There's been a lot of hair questions that I've been getting on my social media. Okay, great. So I thought I'd ask you a few questions uh -huh. um, and you can answer them. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so my first question is from one of my followers called Julia Zett and she says, I have very thin and dry hair and every time I use moisturizing shampoo, my hair gets very straight and has no volume. What kind of shampoo could I use? That sounds like the hair shampoo she's using is a bit thick and maybe too heavy for her or something. Yeah, I feel when it's fine hair, the, 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 the most common problem is people using shampoo that's too rich or heavy for the hair. So if, the, if it's a volume and, and it feels too heavy, then go for like more of a volumizing shampoo. And the best tip is, don't use conditioner and instead use a tangle teaser after. Mm. And, and, and so, the conditioner is really there just to sort of stop it from getting knotted. So with tangle teasers, you can have, you can achieve the same effect. Mm. So just That's kind a brush, right? The tangle yeah, teaser. Yeah, it's just I a brush that, brush that helps. Or just use a tiny bit of conditioner on the on the mid lengths and ends, and then rinse it straight away. But yeah, it sounds like the problem is too much product yeah. or and too much of the wrong. Everyone thinks their hair's drier than it is, so they reach for a yeah. more rich product than they need. I think one of the mistakes I've made in the past is using too much conditioner. And I have quite fine hair as well, so I actually, you need much less than you think you do. Sure, yeah. you kind of just putting it through the, through the ends yeah. and the midsection of your hair. Yeah. And then one of my favorite tips to get volume when I'm doing my own hair is, is to dry it off and then to tip my hair upside down and get a big round brush with the hair dryer. Sure. It's definitely not as professional as what you can get in the salon or as you can do, but it will do yeah. to get me about for the day. So that's a, that was a good question though. Really good question. So to get a really low tongue, my top tip is to take quite a big section of hair, a large tongue, 
wrap it round the barrel, leave the root and the end out, hold it, and sort of I tend to do this a bit, and then when I pull it out, I pull it flat or pull it straight because where it cools is where it sets. Oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Why do you, you leave the ends out? I mean, I, I like it when you leave the ends out because it makes the curl a little bit cooler and beachier sure. and less kind of polished. Yes. I think when you have a curl then it kind of lends to that more kind of sort of sexy, voluminous, sort yeah. of um, bl blown out kind sure. of look. But when you leave the ends straight, it kind of is a bit, it's a bit cooler, a bit more yeah. beachy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So when I tongue my hair, I normally tongue uh, the curls all, all the same and I, t I always curl them away from the face. So the left side and the right side, they'll always be facing away from the face. But you, I've noticed that you kind of do one of each. So you'll do a curl facing, going towards the face and a and curl going away from the yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it's, the reason for that? Um, because the reason I do it is just to make it, because I don't want it to look like it's been tonged. I want a really natural wave. So I tend to work opposite directions and right. kind of work as, in it, as if it's brickwork and sort of stagger them and do opposites so that just for that really um, sort of, I just want it to look like it's naturally cool. I don't want it to look like you've had a tongue, as it okay. were. Okay. <laughs> had a tongue. Had a tongue. <laughs> Okay, so we've got that natural wave. We're then just going to take the top section of the hair and just back comb here a bit. Just go into the hair and push down. Sometimes good just to spritz with a bit of spray. Would you put hairspray in first or dry shampoo to, to hold the back combing? I would use hairspray personally. Okay. I would spray I would spray the I would back comb the section into the root and then mm. just give it a little spritz of hairspray. Okay. Dry shampoo is great to use on, on, on the roots just to really give it volume and body. Okay. And I know that's something that you really like to do. I do love dry shampoo. Yeah. So we can just back, keep back going. Down just past the crown. Maybe we should just leave it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we're just going to lightly brush it over. We've back combed it all sort of there and the sides back a little bit. Then we're going to take these side sections Good tip for girls is when you're doing your own updo, don't look in a mirror because everything's back to front. Tend to look away hmm. to do the hair. Um, just to say here with the back, all I've done is pulled the sides round and um, taken the two sides, tied it in a double knot and now I'm just securing with a few pins. And then what we'll do after is just kind of pull some bits out. Wow, that looks quite good for you, actually. Sometimes you surpass yourself. I'm having a good day today. You really are. 13 years and you finally can give me a good Cinderella's haircut. going to the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, Georgia. It looks great. Really nice. Maybe finish with a bit of hairspray. We know what you like on the dance floor. <laughs> Love it. I love the way you tied the hair. Oh, that's thanks. So nice. Good little tip. Good little tip. Okay, that's you done. Thank you. Last minute touch ups. A little bit of powder. Gorgeous. I love the hair. Looks great. I love the makeup. Thank you. You're beautiful. Thank you. You're ready. Thank you, Lisa. So